Hey there guys, Alpha Claw here. Just got around with the sine and cosine law. Okay, so we gotta look at the sine law first. The sine law says that A over sine A equals B over sine B. Alright, so if we look at that triangle, we name the outer sides with a lowercase letter and the interior angles with the capital letter. Notice that lowercase A will be opposite to angle capital A. And that's kind of the convention that Stan would use, so I wouldn't really go changing that. So of course, you know, you can let them equal any letter, it doesn't actually matter. So if this is going to be capital B, then this will be lowercase B because it's opposite to the angle. And this is going to be capital C, this is going to be lowercase C because it's opposite to the angle. Now, of course, because it doesn't really matter which side's any letter, you can also say that the sine will equal C over sine C. But we just kind of let it equal two sides because they're all equal, so we can use like this. Oh yeah, a sine law is used to work out the variable of a triangle. So if you had, you know, two sides and an angle that is, op uh, if you have two sides and an angle that is opposite to one of the two sides, you can kind of say, well, you've got one side, you've got an angle that's opposite to the side, you've got the other side, so you can work out the variable B, and you can use that to calculate your triangle. And we'll run through some examples of this in my later videos, and if you're on my website, that'll be at the bottom of the page. Alright, and the other thing it's used for is if you have two angles and any side. So if you were given, for instance, Angle C, angle B, and side A, you can work out all the remaining things of the triangle. Because you know that angle A, angle A will equal 180 degrees, subtract C, subtract B, because the interior angles have to add to 180. So you can kind of work out what angle A is. Then you have, you know, you have A, you have side A, you have an angle, and you can kind of work out the remaining side. And you can obviously go back with C. Once again, we'll look at this more in our examples. Alright, so. The next thing I look at is different forms of the sine law, because it comes in a lot of different forms. Like, I just showed you A over sine A equals B over sine B. But that's no different than writing something like C over sine C equals B over sine B. As long as you kind of keep the ratio, C's with the C's and the B's with the B's. But you can also write, you know, like sine A over A equals sine B over B. You kind of put them top. And that's just kind of rearranging the equation. The one that confuses most people is the rearrangement sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. And most people kind of get the real block. They kind of go to high school and they call this the sine law and they kind of get to, you know, university or university level, you know, courses and they kind of go, well, hang on, if this is the sine law, what do I call the sine law? But they're actually just the same thing. Except this can only be used with respect to right angles. And I'll show you why that is. If we have a right angle over here, that's a right angle, and we let you know, this equals C, uh, sorry, I'll be lowercase C, my apologies. If you like this equals C, then this is going to be C. We have our angle here, we'll call that A, and we have outside A. Okay, so basically what this rule does, that's a C, not an E, is it says that, if we plug it into this one, we know that angle C is going to equal 90 degrees. So, we rewrite out our original sine rule, because that doesn't have any C's in it. We can just use one of the alternative versions. A over sine A over sine A will equal C over sine C. All right. And we know C is 90 degrees. So we'll equal C over 90 degrees. We know sine 90 degrees is equal to 1. You just put that in your calculator and check if you don't believe me. So A over sine A is equal to C. And if we rearrange that, if we take, you know, A equals C sine A, A over C equals sine A. Alright, so we got A over C equals sine A after a little bit of rearrangement. And, I just put my angle in there. We know that this side is opposite to this angle. And sometimes, especially in basic trigonometric trig 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 things, the side opposite to the angle is called opposite, and the side adjacent to the angle is called adjacent. So that's going to be opposite to the angle, and that's going to be adjacent to the angle. And the length between the two is called the hypotenuse. So if you're going on Pythagoras theorem or anything like that, you should know that pretty thoroughly by now. So, if we know that A, sorry, that should be a lowercase a, that should be a capital A, that's probably going to confuse a lot of people, and I really apologize for that, but, yeah. Okay, so you'll get, you know A is equal to opposite, if we just, you know, change its name, because it's the opposite to the angle, and we know C is equal to the hypotenuse. So there we showed that, you know, oh, and A is going to be equal to theta, which is just the angle. So there we kind of rearranged the standard sine rule to get sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And you can only use that form for right angle triangles because otherwise, otherwise the uh, sine C won't cancel out to 1. So we'll probably look at that through the questions in a little bit more detail as well at the bottom of the page. This is kind of just to be an intrinsic, uh, a conceptual level feel. Alright, the next thing we're going to be looking at is the cosine law. 
And the cosine law is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos b. Or, sorry, cos c. Cos c. Alright. And we'll just draw a triangle up again quickly. Alright. So that's our formula. If we were to put in our kind of variables, we have one angle C, side C, and maybe we have, I know. Now let's say we have angle C, right? And we have side B, and we have side A. So if we were to use the original sine law, which was A over sine A equals B over sine B, we kind of look at this equation and go, well, we've got C, that doesn't really fit in there, we've got A, we got B, but then we still got two variables, so we can't really work out. And, you know, no matter how you kind of rearrange this, you won't be able to work out that equation without using the cosine law. Which is basically what the cosine law is, it kind of just makes up for that little bit that the sine law is lacking. Okay, so we've got A, we've got B, we got A, we got B, we got capital C, which is the angle C. So we can work out the side of C squared just by kind of square rooting all of this answer. And, once again, we'll go for an example down the questions, but that's pretty basic. Alright, the next thing we're going to look at is the cos rule with respect to right angles. And that is supposed to be, no, I'll, I'll redraw that. That is a really bad, that is a really bad right angle. Maybe I'll have a better luck, some better luck if I make it purple. Purple always seems better for right angle triangles. Alright, so we'll call this angle C. This can be side C. And we'll call this A and B. Alright, so we know that cos, we know that C squared is going to equal a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos and we know that angle c will be 90 degrees so you can put 90 degrees in now cos 90 degrees is going to equal zero so you're going to have 2ab times zero and that's all just going to cancel out to make zero so you can say that c squared equals a squared plus b squared and we know from pythagoras theorem that that's actually correct so if you're kind of wondering you know how it relates to right angle triangles it's just going to be pythagoras rule and that's just something i threw in there because i thought it was really cool and everyone loves learning math all right so that is the sine and cosine law if you want some examples, you can go to the bottom of my webpage. I'll have all this is obviously downloadable in note format. And hopefully you can master sine and cosine more now. All right, out for out.